This episode is brought to you by Amy. Clangers happen. Lucky you're with Amy. Aces, welcome back to another episode of Tommy Talks. This week, we're joined by Jack Ginevan, former Magpie and Premiership player, and we break down all of that. We talk about the Premiership, the ups and downs of being a young star at the Collingwood Football Club. We even talk about the night before the grand final and going to the Mooney Valley races. We break all of that down. We even give Kane Collins a cheeky mention and break his relationship down with Jack. And then we talk about him at the Hawthorne Footy Club and what that trade was like how excited he is to be at the footy club that he buried for as a young kid. He even shares some of his goals he's got for the year. I really enjoyed this one, and I know you'll love this one too. So check it out and enjoy the podcast. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but i got huge news. We have all our styles and colours restocked on the website right now. It's been months. We ran out of stock, but we're back. Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house. Righto, let's get into the show. Guinea, welcome to Tommy Talks, big fella. Finally, we got you on. Yeah. As a hawk. It was always going to be a pie, but as a hawk. Yeah, I know. It's unbelievable to be here. It's um, been a long time coming. I feel like it's been six months in the... In the making, but yeah, finally, it's, it's a bit like that, a bit of travel. Um, everyone's away, mate. Really excited today. I, uh, I, I truly am. As I said to you before, I didn't speak too much to you at the front, but I reckon you're one of the most exciting players in the competition. That's why someone, um, in the media that's quite negative always goes you because he knows it creates a headline. You're very skillful. You're very young. You played at one of the biggest clubs. You've already got a flag, and now you're at another club um, that's on the up as well. So. I was uh, really excited but uh, to talk to you about footy and life. But let's just start growing up. We'll start where you grew up because I know you love to get back to your local community and I love blokes that do that. I'm actually heading back to my local community, uh, the Riddles Creek Bombers, and uh, helping out the under-16s Thursday night. So I'm looking forward to getting back down there. But um, talk to me about you know, how you grew up and uh, where it was and um, kind of what sports you're involved in and whatnot as a kid. Yeah, so, yeah, initially from um, Castlemaine and uh, I've been there basically all my life until I moved up to um, Melbourne for footy and then, yeah, just mum, dad, two sisters. Um, our family's really close. They always come down to my games on the weekend, which I'm extremely grateful for and, um, yeah, still go down a bit when I can. It's I'm a bit of a city boy now, so it's um, a little bit harder to go down there because I'm loving Melbourne so much, which is a good thing, mum always says. But, um, yeah, I'm – like you said, I go through sort of through Riddles Creek, past Riddles Creek to get to Castlemaine, and um, I'm going back to Stratfield, say one of my local clubs, to uh, do a sort of fundraiser thing as well in in the next few weeks, which will be good. And um, yeah, I always try to get back there. When I That's can. great. So, what's a fundraiser so we can you know shine some light on it? Yeah, well, I'm just going there to a bit of an appearance, and um, I can't remember who it's with, but that w- the club gets a thousand dollars as well. So for footies and equipment for the. Um, younger kids, which would be great. Um, and yeah, it would be good to go down there and finally see them all again. And, um, yeah, I won a twos flag there, which is pretty cool. That is big. Hey, they're not easy to win a flag. I don't think I ever won a flag at Riddle. Um, we won, I think under tens were the top of the ladder. They never had a, uh, you know, they kept it just like a bit like the soccer, but, um, yeah, never won a flag at Riddle. Uh, yeah, it's, that's awesome, mate. It's, uh, I love blokes to get back there. Like I said, it's good that you've got a beautiful family that, uh, get to all your games. So Vic country. Yeah, kind of my my upbringing with football was a bit different. I under fourteens and fifteens, I was in like V line cup for Bendigo and was in the twos and like had to make my way through that and I ended up like getting best on in the twos one day playing half back and then then under sixteens, Vic Country got cut and then yeah, sort of just like put my head down and uh, really gave it a nudge and then yeah, under seventeens, uh, didn't make it as a bottom major and then, yeah, top age, finally made it, but then COVID happened. So it was all a bit of a – I actually only played one game in my top age year, which was, yeah, pretty ridiculous. But it was a club footy game and – Sort of took the piss, so it helped me out. There you go. So you're a hidden gem. You'd be a yeah. You'd be a recruiter's nightmare because you <laughs> haven't got to see you. And uh, what pick did you end up going? Ah, uh, 13 in the rookie draft. So I was about like 85. Are you a rookie? Yeah. yeah. What a gem. <laughs> there you go. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um. There's, yeah. That's amazing. That that would have been tough that COVID year, just not being able to put your best foot forward and kind of you know present yourself on a stage where all the recruiters are there and whatnot. Was it a bit tough? Yeah, it was weird. Um, yeah, in Castle May, and me and my best mate, who Cam, who lives probably like 10 minutes away from me, we just used to crunch the gym and run and um, all that stuff because it was sort of pretty easy to 
we had a home gym and the oval and there wasn't many cops around Castlemaine, so like yeah. couldn't really get in trouble much. So, but yeah, footy wise, only got to play one game, didn't do the national combine, didn't do any of that. So they were only really basing me off one game and bottom age pioneers, which was um, pretty crazy. Yeah. That's probably why you were rookie draft. So if you had a few more games, just straight up the order. Um, and then let's talk about, you know, uh, getting picked up by the pies. Like who did you barrack for as a kid? Yeah. Hawks. So um, it's cool now. Yeah. Getting picked up. It was on my, for some reason and somehow it landed on my 18th birthday, the 9th really? of December, which is like, that's the latest draft ever, I think in the AFL. So yeah, landed on my 18th birthday, had probably like 70 people over, all my mates and all my families, just because it was my 18th and the draft was on, I thought I was a chance and then, yeah, didn't get picked up. Oh, and that then, been, how was that? Because I, I, I remember when I was going through that, there was a few blokes that, well, it wasn't their birthday. That's tough, but they had a party and their name didn't come out. And mm. I just remember thinking, oh, this would suck to be there and, you know, it'd be very awkward. What, like, how are you in the moment? I know you're an up and about guy, but deep down, like, how, how are you feeling? Yeah, it was, um, it got to about probably pick 55 and like everyone was sitting in a room like this and I was around, like sitting around the corner, like peeping, just like, <laughs> yeah. like fleas and go on. And then the last few picks were like West Coast, GWS, Freo, and mum was looking at me like, oh. I don't know if you want, like, don't go there, but like, we want you. So yeah, didn't get picked up and then, uh, just cracked the sides, went into my room and just every, like my mom came in, then my dad came in, then my girlfriend came in and everyone was coming in just one by one, my mates. And yeah, then we ended up just having a few, a few beers and, um, having a good night of it. But then, yeah, the next day I got called, oh, I, was, I was scrolling through Twitter and then my name just like popped up, pick 13 to Collingwood, and then that's how I found on out. Twitter, that is yeah. crazy. We're still going through the online times. <laughs> I remember all the other boys saying that like years ago, they'd have to go online and see if they got picked up. Mm. Far out. So you, it's a yo yo, isn't it? Yeah. It's like one minute you just, you don't get the next minute you're going to the biggest club in Australia. What was that moment like? Yeah, it was um, unbelievable. It was like, yeah, probably like 11 30, and all my mates are still pissed and asleep, <laughs> <laughs> hung over. So I had to wake them up and Tell them I'm playing for Collingwood and then, you know, you get your phone call from Bucks, which is, yeah, a, a really cool moment. And um, and then the players start to call you and like pendles and stuff like that. And I just remember those moments and in, in my backyard in Castlemaine, just I had a Collingwood hat on, one of my mates back for Collingwood and just like stuff like that you'll remember forever. Yeah, that is good. It brings back the best memories. I talk about that all the time with people, I think getting drafted or getting, you know, just getting on a list that moment with all your friends and that is the, and family is the most special moment. Then probably playing your first game and I'd imagine the next one is winning a flag. I've yeah. never had that feeling, but I'd, I'd imagine they're the, the best feelings in the world. There you go. So then, and then you grew up barracking for Hawks. So we'll talk about Hawks later on. Um, any funny moments with a phone call? Like did any of the players prank you? I know we used to love mucking around, changing blokes. Like, we used to text the young kids and say it's from another bloke and they <laughs> they wouldn't talk to them for two weeks. Yeah, no, nah, I, I was actually pretty lucky. I had none of that. Um, uh, it would have been pretty mean to pick on the rookie, I feel like. So <laughs> yeah, the rookie maybe they would have felt pretty bad for me. But um, no, nah, I had nothing like that, but it would have been pretty funny if I got cop something like that. Now, were you always this um, entertainer that played forward? Like you just mentioned you played halfback as a junior. Like how, I mean, how have you been, become so crafty? Yeah, I, I had a lucky coach, um, Danny O'Bree from the Benigo Pioneers. He, well, he made me play back that day just to, you know, get spark some different interests. But then, um, yeah, which sort of allowed me to come into the, the better side. And then, yeah, I sort of just have honed on in my, honed in on my craft um, as a forward Basically throughout my whole career, even when I was probably 12, 13, I never really played much midfield, which has probably helped me out playing AFL because a lot of players come in as midfielders and then get pushed either back or um, forward because it's so hard to play midfield as a youngster. So yeah, I've sort of just um, been a forward my whole whole career and then that's probably helped me transition into the AFL pretty easy. Yeah, love it. And then talk about AFL. What, what are your early memories? Like, you know, I remember... You know, I think about when we get, when you get to a club, you think, oh, like I'm in the club now. I'm a big, but you just realise you're probably miles behind. Your body's, you know, not strong. Mm. You can't. Your running capabilities not up there. So you've got a lot of work to be done to, you know, squeeze into the side. Talk to me about your preseason and you know how hard it was to kind of crack the side and then that first game and what it was like. Yeah, it's um, we were, I was very lucky. Like Collingwood drafted, I think eight eight players in my year, so we had. A group of eight of us who were like walked around like on each other's shoulders basically because we're all pretty nervous so yeah we were pretty lucky reef mcginnis probably my best mate out of the group is still applies and still one of my good mates he 
looked after me because he was a big Scotch boy, Melbourne. He was uh, a bit of an alpha. So, the alpha. Yeah, so I was um, <laughs> just trailing behind him. And, um, yeah, I, I ended up making so many good friends, the Brown brothers, Trent Bianco, John Noble, Murph. Like, we had a really good group, Isaac Quainer, um And, yeah, I sort of gravitated to the older boys somehow just – through what I was doing and my interests and stuff. And I feel like when you talk about interests, me and Trent Bianco love basketball. So that's how I become friends with him. And then he's obviously mates with the older boys. And um, yeah, that's just sort of that. And then, yeah, the first game was, it took a while. I obviously played VFL until up about around 19 was my debut. And the debut was pretty weird. There was no one there, no jumper presentation with my family or friends running at Marvel Stadium on a Friday night with zero crowd. So I've had a pretty weird journey um, compared to a lot of kids probably now coming through the system, but it's been, um, yeah, something I'll look back when I'm a ki- when I'm older and tell my kids. How old are you now? 21. So yeah, 21. I reckon what you've gone through, like from, you know, what you just said about you know, COVID to now. Yeah is some of the most amazing. You could write a book already. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like the journey as a kid from Castle, Maine, that then goes to the pies as a rookie rookie drafted and misses out on his birthday. And then uh, you play your first game in COVID with no crowd. And then you go on to be this, you know, as I said, this enter- entertainer that just sparks so much interest. And you know, I think if you're a pies, you love it. Everyone else is probably hating on you because you got the, you're always kicking goals and celebrating and putting bums on seats, as we love to say. Um, let's talk about that. What is your, when you're playing footy, what is it about the crowd and the moment and roughing up players and just, you know, as I said, putting bums on seats? Where does that all come from? Because I know as a young fella, that's what we used to do mucking around in all sports basketball, cricket, you name it. Mm. Um, but, yeah, doing it in front of 90,000 every second week, it must be uh, so much fun. Yeah, it's unreal. I think it comes a lot from my little, little sister Meg and uh, my mum. They're just so tenacious and um, love attacking the contest, even in netball and just things they do in life and um, sort of that never-say-die attitude. And um, we have this sort of thing, me, mum and my sister, that we don't get nervous for some reason. And, um, yeah, so I've never really been nervous to come into an environment where, you know, there's bigger people or I've always sort of backed my own abilities in quietly at the start and then maybe just by time then it speaks volumes. But, um, yeah, probably from my mum and my sister just having that competitive edge and just being like really calm in situations where there's a lot of people looking at you, but you know you've done the work to be able to perform in front of them. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, geez, I'd just do anything to kick a sausage right now in front of 90. It must be an amazing feeling. When's, when when do the Hawks play the Pies? What round? Round four. They, well, that's they, a, well, this podcast will just come out before that, which is great timing. How excited are you for that game? Mm. Talk about not getting nerves, but you get some nerves for that one? Yeah, mate. <laughs> I, I, was, I was with Isaac last night, so he'll probably – come and play on me, which is... Um, he is so strong, isn't he? Yeah, and look at me. I'm a bit of a tweak. Yeah, so. you can get one on him early <laughs> and sit on his head because he'd be a great step ladder if you can get up there. Yeah, so, no, nah, that'll be good. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's going to be a really good fun time playing against him. I've obviously made so many mates there and friendships for life, as as they always say, when you win a flag together. So, yeah, I'll definitely be pumped for that. They probably should have put it at the G in front of 90,000, but they, they chose gather around for some reason. Oh, is it in Adelaide? On a Sunday at 5 o'clock, so. Oh, there's, there's the Guinea big... Cup in, in SA. Nothing wrong with SA. Yeah. Where is it? It's not at Norwood or something, is it? Yeah, no, it's at Adelaide Oval. Oh, you got Adelaide Oval. That's all right. I've, I've heard a few boys are playing at Norwood, which Norwood, great club. Yeah. But they're a bit flat because they wanted Nor- to play. <laughs> yeah, we love Norwood. Don't get me wrong, but the boys wanted to play at Adelaide Oval, one of the best uh, stadiums in Australia. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be good, but it would have been better at the G. Yeah, <laughs> maybe well, in a final. As long as you can, as long as you can, just you know, just there'll be a lot of eyes on that game. You just gotta you gotta set yourself for that. You yeah. <laughs> just even to the boys, hey boys, you know, if you're 50 out, just little tick back lead. Just just get me in the game early. Yeah, <laughs> Gunston and Bruce are really good at that. Them two wax on, so I might get into their little duo and yeah, get up at them. No, it's a great forward line, and we'll get to Hawks later. Back to the pies, though. You, you know, talk to me about how would you sum it up. We'll get to the flag at the end. I want to talk about that um, and, you know, that grand final week in its own, you know, and tidy. But let's just talk about the pies, your journey there, how many years. You just spoke about your close friends, but how would you sum it up? Yeah, so three years of the pies, in one word, a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> in a few words. Um, yeah, but like an amazing journey. Like we've said, COVID, first game, no crowd. And then only playing five games, kicking a few goals, really finding my feet late. And then the season ends, big preseason, um, really go hard on myself. And then round one, the GoPro stuff, like I'm just kicked a few goals and then I dye my hair and then Anzac Day medal. And then every 
news article every single day for probably 10 weeks and then um, stop there Anzac Day medal they don't get any I just saw James Heard this morning getting a coffee and I, I, I you know he's my idol growing up but it's because Anzac Day is the biggest day of the of the year and talk about Bucks calling your first call when you get drafted mate you, you, you win an Anzac Day medal at that age I don't know what the record is do you know what the record is for the young, are you the youngest person uh, yeah either the youngest there you go so, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is like the that's the biggest game on the calendar for the year outside of finals. Yeah. What 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 was that? I mean, you you love you just told me you love a little bit of the limelight. Like the phone would have been blowing up. Oh, unbelievable! There's chicks from everywhere. Like, you, <laughs> You're just, the man. You're yeah. the man. Yeah. Was and good. your hair was bleached blonde, yeah. wasn't it? People coming out of the closet, but no, nah, it was um, it was an amazing amazing day. I, I remember going to the beach as a solid day, and or even the day before, I was in the spa with Jeremy Howe and Jack Madge, and I said, look. I'll win the Anzac Day medal <laughs> and you got to buy me a slab if I do. <laughs> and they remember it to this day. So, um, and I was telling, I don't know why, but I was telling my sister and I was telling people that I'll win it, like as a piss day, yeah, first yeah. Anzac Day. And then, yeah, went to the beach with my best mate, just was like real confident in myself. And then um, I kicked the first goal of the game. And I, when you kick the first of the oh. game, you, you're just away. So yeah, you know, that, that, that early touch and yeah. a goal early though, yeah. that's, then you, you know you're on. And then, yeah, I was just flying. had, I had Dyson Apple, so I was. Oh, don't do Dyson. Sorry, like that. Don't do Dyson. He's a good man. Yeah, I know. He's a, I was, actually, he's a good man. But I was just having a day out, and then once I kicked the fifth in the last quarter, I was like, "Oh fuck!" I actually might have won it. <laughs> and then, yeah, I remember Pender was coming up to him just as the speech was about to happen. He's like, "Don't fuck up the speech," and I'm like, "Oh fuck, I'm gonna fuck it up for sure." <laughs> yeah, and then a few weeks later, oh, me and Pendles sometimes used to, used to joke about it. he's only, and then he goes, "Oh, you've only got three more to catch me." So, <laughs> oh, has he won four <laughs> yeah, of these? So. That's so, crazy. Um, no, nah, it was unreal, and um, yeah, so grateful for that opportunity. That would be such a special. That's something that you'll look back on later in life. You know, at the moment, you're only 21. You have got a lot going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of success around the corner, but that medal. Like I remember McGough, Mark McGough. Like I remember he, same thing. No one knew who he was, yeah. and then he won that medal. And everyone's like McGough, he's a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows him, <laughs> and he wasn't like he was like a tagger, you know, yeah. in the wet weather. I remember that one. But um, being there live, it's probably one of my, the greatest moments of AFL that I've been to mm. live as a fan. Um, so yeah, I'd imagine your parents and your family in the stands. I mean, that, what was it like when you got into the rooms and gave them a hug? Yeah, it was, I, I don't know, it was just like so weird. Like I didn't really know like what to do. I'm like, geez, like I was only 10 games into my career. So it was like, it all just slapped me in the face. And then obviously media and like, you're just doing all this stuff. And then like Monday, Tuesday media. And, and then you just got to like, bang, like there's another game to go. Um, but yeah, it was so fun. We I ended up going out on a five-day break. So was, We've all done that. Yeah. We've all done that. <laughs> so I got a cop to whack on Monday, but uh, on Tuesday because we played Monday. But, um, yeah, it was so fun with all my best mates. Mate, when you're 19 years old, you're going to make those mistakes. <laughs> let's have a little laugh here. So let's just talk about pre-Anzac Day medal. What was it like? You know, what could you do that you couldn't do post-Anzac Day medal? <laughs> well, even just going to the beach, I'd imagine with that bleach blonde hair, no one would have known who you were. And then the next – day, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. So yeah, the followers jumped up significantly. <laughs> what did the followers go from? I reckon it was probably like 7,000 to about 70,000. Wow. That is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was a good start. And there's always a few hidden gems in there, which you, which you love. <laughs> um, and then the electric line's pretty quick. You go straight to the front and- uh, <laughs> <laughs> You don't line up. Yeah. You don't line up as an Anzac Day medalist. You're no. straight to the front. You <laughs> yeah. get your mate to go, hey, I need this bloke, he's getting hassled. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, a few coffees around, people just being so nice and there's so many Pies fans out and about. So yeah, um, yeah a few photos and stuff, but yeah, it was an unbelievable time and um, sort of, it was a great- time but now I'm pretty happy to just like low key now yeah hide around the corners yeah, and it's a bit like that you mm, get the, you hit the highs and you go highs. oh shit it's a it's always thinking imagine being like Justin Bieber you know yeah. think about don't stop you wouldn't be able to do anything yeah. can't even go get a coffee without security you know it's just mm. um nah it's awesome I, I I'm glad you brought that up because I uh I just remember seeing that and you know, who is this kid? He's a superstar. <laughs> he's kicked five on the cheek in his 10th game on an end day. Like, yeah, everyone in the world would have loved to do that. Mm. Um, so you're talking about the roller coaster. That's another, that's a high. Then, you know, talk about some lows. What was another low point yeah. throughout that journey towards yes. the, the granny? Yeah, so that year was, um, yeah, we lost in the prelim. So we, we were playing really well. We were winning close games and we are having so much fun and it was just like we couldn't really lose. Like we were just playing so well. I think we won 10 in a row and then uh, we lost the first final to Geelong by – six points, which we nearly should have won. And um, then we bet Frio and then, yeah, we played that Sydney final and lost by a point and 
it always comes up on my Instagram, like us kicking a few goals and going back. I think we we're down by 40 points and Hoskin, Elliott and Steele kick these amazing goals and we're down by three points with three minutes to go and we kick another two points and we're just so close. And, um, yeah, there's heaps of photos of me and Nick crying together on each other's shoulders and it was a pretty, yeah, emotional time. I think I was 19 at the time and you're like, fuck, I'm never going to get back here. And, um, and I didn't have my family up. They couldn't get up because it was so – all the Pies fans were going up and yeah. it was so expensive. And um, so I was hugging everyone's family. They were coming to hug me because I had no one there. So. Oh, yeah, that'd be tough. I've lost a prelim. I know how you feel. I was in a, I was bawling my eyes out in front of my mum and dad, I remember. So, yeah, that'd be weird not having yeah. – not weird, but, yeah, I guess uh, every other game they're there. Yeah, so I was I was hugging Trent's family and I was hugging Dakes' family and I was crying and I couldn't even talk. And um, But, yeah, that was probably – that was a low. And, um, but – you know what they say, like that loss probably built um, what we brought in 2023. And then, yeah, was, I didn't have the best off season and because I was so drained from that year and had a bit of stuff going on. And then I didn't obviously play at the start of the year. And then I worked my way back and then got dropped again. And this is what I'm talking about the roller coaster of AFL football. And then finally coming back, but I played sub probably six or seven times. And then, um, yeah, the grand final, um, I was lucky enough to play and not be sub. And, yeah, the grand final I didn't do much, but it was um yeah, such an amazing experience. One of the best grand finals probably seen in the last ten years. Um and yeah, to win that with all my best mates was so cool. You were so talked about last year because of that sub, like do you sub him, do you play him? Mm. Does he, you know, full game? Um, talk about what's it like as a young because you're a young man, you're very young. Like when you when you're thirty years old like I am now, you look back and go, Wow, it was pretty crazy what I went through. Uh, you know, What's your advice to yourself last year if you could go back? Was there anything you would change or anything you'd do differently? Yeah. Um, yeah, probably just, um, yeah, screw me head on from the start. And it's it's so hard to play catch up in AFL. Like from that 2022 season where we lost the prelim and I was so mentally drained and I probably got carried away in the off season and, um, yeah, didn't really train as much as I should have and got better like people were around me. So, um, yeah, you can't, you can't stop in the AFL. You've got to keep going because, you know, so many people around you are getting better. And, um, if you're not getting better every day, like people just catch up to you so quickly. So I feel like I've done that at Hawthorne and, um, yeah, I've switched on a bit and as you get older and, and mature, you know, these things come to you, um, much easier and you don't, you realize, um, yeah, that it's pretty hard to keep playing at the AFL level. Let's go through granny week. I've got to ask you this question because it's the most talked about question ever. Um, pre-game, you go to the Valley, Money, Mooney Valley, Money Valley, we like to call them. Yeah, Money Valley. Did you have a horse running? What's the, give us the context. It's the most talked about, it was the most talked about thing ever. And I'm so glad, like, you know, that you've won because mm. it's just results take care of everything. But yeah. um, you love your horse racing. Let's just start there. Where Where's the passion for horse racing? You know, where did it all start? Yeah, there's no real, like, link to my family or anything. I sort of just, um, yeah, started watching it with a few of my mates, probably at the pub when I was, you know, 16, 17 and um, just real country, like Bendigo, like that's sort of what you do when you're 18 and um, yeah, just sort of liked it from there and then, um, yeah, just grew a passion for it then got some horses on my own and um, which isn't going that well at the moment, but <laughs> no, just, just going to take your time. <laughs> Don't be sending me those audios. Yeah. I've already had a little block all the week about these audios. <laughs> yeah, just send me the t- fucking money invoice. <laughs> um, send me the one when it's 16 bucks yeah. and it's going to go all right. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, um, yeah, so sort of just f- f- fell in love with it through my mates and stuff. And then, yeah, the Valley didn't have a horse running. Um, you know, I was probably just thinking about the grand final a lot during the week and, um, yeah, it was sort of just me and my mate went there, it was 6.30 and got home at 9.30, like it wasn't really that big of a deal. And, um, we're in a box actually with a few storm boys as well. Yeah, I think and, Munster was there, yeah. he said, yeah. Munster and, um, uh, Jerome Hughes. Yeah, Hughes and, was there. And Welsh, yeah, big Welsh. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, all the boys. Yeah, great so they, they were looking after me, we were having good chats and, um, yeah, there was nothing really to it. We, I just wanted to get the mind off it and I was home asleep, 9.30 in bed feeling cherry the next day and um of course the media just carries on about mm. it but you know for me that was like it didn't really matter like the preparation was going to be the same if I was home or if I was there I was going to be sitting on the couch slut like not watching doing, them on tv yeah exactly yeah. so um yeah it was probably better to go out and just like talk to people and just I, I didn't think about footy once so 
Um, yeah, looking back, I, I don't think it's a mistake from my behalf, but um, probably just how people perceived it. It didn't look great, which would be the only thing I would change, probably. It's just the context. No one has context. Yeah, you know, yeah, no yeah. one knows you're there at 6.30. No one knew you left at 9.30. No one knows you love horses. Yeah. Um, no one knows your pre-game routine anyway. You could have went there last week, the week before, the week before that. Yeah, 100%. Because it's obviously the grand final. It was just such a talked about topic. Yeah. It literally was like, would you do that? And it's just, I learned, that's the biggest thing I learned when I was a young player, even at Freo, like perception is reality. You, if you just, if you do something in the eyes of someone else that they think that's just not normal mm. and if it gets blown up in the paper, yeah. chances are it's not. And it just, yeah, you, you got a lot of people talking about it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, did you uh, did you back a winner at least that night? Oh, I had a, had a blast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you? There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then when did you find out the next day? We'll talk about the game in a second. But like, was it was it instant? Like when you woke up, was it already breaking news, or was it more after? Uh yeah. Graham Wright called me at probably like ten thirty in the morning. That was probably the only bad thing out of the situation. Like, if anything, I don't know what the players saw, but like, if it distracted them, like that would be what I'd like apologetic for. Like, if mm. they were upset about it but like um yeah Graham Wright called me at 10 30 and just said did you go to the races I was like yeah like I was home early like nothing really happened and then he I, I don't even know what he said I was he just said oh thanks for telling me like thanks for being honest and then yeah nothing really came of it apart from until like Flyers press conference and my exit meeting and that was sort of when I knew I'd probably should leave <laughs> So, Guinea, grand final day, it arrives, you're in the race, even even the um, parade, like what was it like? How do you sum it all up? Well, just take everyone through a journey for the week, um, even selection, where did you, you know, everything, just one o'clock back and give us an insight to what the whole week and day was like. Yeah, yeah, selection probably first um, of all. Like, obviously, I was sub the week before. Had a pretty good game in <laughs> 10 minutes and, um, yeah, on Thursday, I, I think it was just doing gym and, Fly always used to just come up to the gym and um, sort of just try to find you. And, yeah, he grabbed me on the shoulder and he just told me I was playing this week and um, I, I just thought it was a sub. And then he's like, oh, no, you're in the 22. So, um, yes, there was, that was an unbelievable feeling. And, um, yeah, I was stoked. The only, I hadn't played in like five weeks, a full game, so I was sort of just like stressing out a little bit. But <laughs> yeah. it was, um, yeah, so good to yeah get the tap on the shoulder and be trusted by the coaches to play out the whole game. And then – yeah, the grand final parade came around. I was in the the car with Murph and uh, my two nieces, Piper and Delaney, who were seven. So, um, yeah, that was really good. It was a really hot day, and um, there was just so many fans. Like it was like unbelievable. I don't I don't know how many people that were there, but it felt like hundred thousand, like hundred fifty thousand. Like there was so many people there, and you're just like in the car, and people are just cheering for you, and like it's just like it's sort of weird. Like why are you cheering for me? Like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, that was cool. And then the um. Darcy and Harris Andrews and like all the teams do the Premiership Cup hold and uh, we had this thing like Darcy you're not allowed to leave your hand off the cup first so like there's videos of like them holding the the cup and he's like not letting go and Harris lets go and then he puts it down and we, we just were all about little wins at, at Collingwood so um, yeah that was good for the mentals and um, and then the game yeah the I don't even really remember the, you can't really go outside in the grand final because there's I think the kiss was on or whatever, whoever was playing and um, yeah, the, the whole build up, like you sort of just inside waiting, like I don't really warm up much, just a few kicks and a few goals and, um, yeah, then running out, like one of the biggest roars ever. And, um, and then the, the, uh, national anthem, it just like dies, like dead silence. So, um, and then after that you run and warm up and do all those things and, yeah, the, the grand final was just, yeah, amazing. Is it a bit of a blur, the game? It was such an entertaining game. Everyone's talking about it, it was sort of the... One of the best grand finals we've seen in a long time. The standard of footy was as high as you could go. The skills, the day, everything was, you know, as I said, no one knew who was going to win. Um, you guys got the chocolates. It was it was such a great grand final for the AFL and for mm -hmm. Collingwood and, um, and yeah, obviously yourself. But what are you, any, any memories from the day? Any chirp? Any yeah. uh, any highlights for you or things that you, you just still can't think stop thinking about? Mm, you probably know best playing on, on wing, half forward. Sometimes you just – it's not your day. I felt like I was just running half. <laughs> I know like, how that like, feels, brother. <laughs> <laughs> like far out. So we we sort of knew like it's sort of that one of us we're going to get off the leash. Bobby, Bo, me, Jamie, like one of our smalls. Like they overcompensate one side so that it gets. And then it was Bobby's day, and it was unreal. And probably memories I have from that day: my two shots I missed, the snap from forty five. 
which I probably should keep, should have kicked a job fine. Touched on the line. Um, and I remember Harris Andrews telling me, this is pretty far out. I was like, I'll, I'll kick it anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just f- fell short. And then the other one, probably the one I remember is Checkers hits it out the back to me and I kick a dribble from the pocket and hits the post. And there's this Lions fan telling me I fucking suck and I remember <laughs> just giving it to her. Like, <laughs> she, um, yeah, probably two big key moments. And then Steele's goal, like – from like 45 with five minutes to go to put us a goal up or two goals up was when I was like, I, th- I think I was just on the field and I was about to go to the bench and I'm like, holy shit, like we're two goals up, there's four minutes to go. Like we've done this so many times, like we won't lose. Like I was so confident that we had so many great players and leaders around that like once it was in this situation, like we don't lose close games. Like, and yeah, we were lucky enough to, um, yeah, win that game. You guys don't lose close ga- like close games, or you, your old team. Didn't. Yeah, I know. Same way, but <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're not talking about yeah. um, You just never lost those close games. What was it like? What did you put it down to? Clearly, there's a lot of mechanisms that go in place, mm. situations, but the belief in the group. I could argue, why didn't you get it done early? You know, like just you guys would yeah. let it slip and then come back and win. It was crazy how many games. I think you did. Uh, there was even I think there was Anzac Day a couple of years ago where Essendon yeah. was out and a big six lead. Goals. Yeah, six goals. I'm thinking Essendon's going to win this, and then hang on, here comes the pies, yeah. and even the other team's got to know you're coming. Like, mm. what was it? Yeah, well, first of all, you have to be fit to come back from those deficits. So we were definitely fit, and then we had so many good leaders. Like, I think I was the youngest on the side, me and Nick, and like Nick's IQs through the roof, and I feel like my IQs very good as well, and like. Um, that was probably just like everyone's IQ was very like talented with Pendles, Howie, Sidey. Like we had so many good leaders, Darcy Moore. Like we had so many good leaders and like trust and belief that we knew like if we got into close situations, like we would just get it done. And we trained it so, so much like in season. And um, yeah, when we were in those situations, it was just like clockwork. It felt so like. good. And Sidey kicks that goal. You know, I think, I think Brizzy kick a quick one mm-hmm. and then, you know, it's neck and neck. But uh, when the siren goes, like, who'd you hug? Mm. Do you getting around the crowd? You would have been losing your mind, yeah. surely. Yeah, I was on the bench and I'm I'm jumping up. I'm next to Josh Dacos and um, I ran, yeah, straight in the field to Bobby and Bo. And I, I would just say, Bobby was just looking at me like his eyes were so wide. Like, he's just, because <laughs> he ran to the crowd and then he was like, there's probably five of them like run to the crowd, but he was on the back of it. So he was, was sort of really in it. And then he turned around and looked at me and I'm looking at him. And we both just like biggest hug. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, like it was just unreal. And that was the first person I hugged. And he, obviously what he's been through, like what a journey for him. And um, yeah, an amazing day for him. But yeah, to that was probably my f- fondest moment of like when the siren went, me and Bobby just locking eyes going, like the jaw dropping. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, this is this is unbelievable. Hug a normie. You were hugging a normie. I know. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Give me cra- some of that. Oh, it's just so good for Bobby. Like he's yeah, as he said, he's had a tough couple of years and um yeah, to win a normie is uh it's it's yeah. crazy. And then what about after the game? That's one one thing that I, I think about yeah, you know, if you win a flag, I've spoken to so many blokes that that have and I just would love I mean, we've all won a flag at some level. If you have, you know what it's like, but at AFL level just having the cup in the hand and, you know, running around and I don't know, I'd imagine you're jumping in front of the crowd. Like, was there any encounters with your family on the, like, did you see your family or did you see them under the race? Where did, where did you meet them? Yeah, it was, um, so you could only have your girlfriend out and I had a girlfriend at the time. So the first person I got to see was like my ex-girlfriend, <laughs> um, which was so cool. Like me and her a kick ass and, um, yeah, that was a special moment. Like I remember that forever. It was so cool. And, um, and then, we hugged and yeah, all that stuff. And then Isaac and Trent Bianco, they're probably my two closest and Murph, like them three, like I got a photo of Murph that is so cool. And then I got a photo with Trent and I, like, you always feel bad for people that don't play. And like, we got this really cool photo in front of the crowd and he was so proud yeah. of, like, what, of what I've done and like, and that's what you want from your best mates. And then me and Isaac, I think we all took in turns of standing like right in front of their cheer squad and like have the cup and, me. and like me and Isaac got so many cool photos of just like standing up and you don't, you're not even really looking, you're just looking at each other like, mate, this is unbelievable. Like, and then you just like walk around the ground and just like, I'm with Pendles and I'm with like Sidey, I'm with Darcy <laughs> yeah. Cameron, I'm with everyone. Like you just go on and you say, how goes this, how goes yeah, this? And like, yeah. you're just carrying on. And, um, I remember I had some speed the speed dealer Sonny's on like I've got a film <laughs> photo of that like and I'm just in front of the crowd like this like and that'll be photos like you look back yeah, and go, oh, man, that's unreal that is elite that is elite when did you leave the G what time did you leave the G oh yeah another this is another roller coaster so me and Oleg Martikov 
got drug tested. So we didn't leave the G till like 9.30, oh, I reckon. you're kidding. So everyone's gone back and done like the, like back at the Holden Centre and done like the, the like, I don't know, the, showed the cup and like went All out on stage. Are, yeah, yeah, that's right. I saw and the like, photo. And me and Leggy are just like, Drinking, drinking, I don't even know, Melbourne's, trying to, <laughs> having a shower together, like drinking Melbourne's, trying to piss, like just waiting. <laughs> and was, you would have been that dehydrated mate, as well. And it, like, to be honest, it was one of the coolest like moments ever. Like me and Leggy, no one's there apart from like, it would have been one of the Collingwood like people that has to be there to help you do all that. And we're just in the shower, like sitting down, I think. Like I was sitting on the ground just drinking beers and like me and him like, it's like, like what's just happened? And we're, we're just going to go do a fierce and like, so that was kind of like bizarre, but it was also just like fitting of me, just like, of course, like yeah. something like that happened. And then, yeah, we took a piss and went over together and everything's already done. And then we sort of just get amongst it straight away yeah. into the after party. Yeah, that's good. You've missed the formalities. Yeah, no, it's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, mate. Oh, it's, uh, it's awesome. As, as I said, you, 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 you'll talk about it when you finish your career way more, um, or obviously when you're in your off season and you're reflecting and you're with those boys. But um, I always love asking about the celebrations. I think it's, uh, it's yeah, it's everyone has a different one. And there you go, the old Asada test. You just, just when you think you're flying and you want a flag, you got to go do a yeah. piss and you can't yeah. piss. So. I know. And then <laughs> everyone came back to mine as well. So it was just oh, absolute chaos. <laughs> chaos, there you go. Oh, very good. Let's talk about the Mad Monday outfit. How did you get it? Because they're not easy to get those silks. Yeah, I know. They're actually pretty hard, Mr. Brightside. Um, <laughs> so they're actually crazy. Craig Williams silks. Um, so I got them on the Friday night at the Valley because I was with a few people um, from the Valley that got us into the box and just looked after us. And then she was like, oh, do you have a Mad Monday outfit? I was like, I haven't even thought about that. <laughs> do you want some silks? And I'm like, oh, that'd be the best thing ever. And then I didn't even know that like it would blow up. So I'm like, just going as a jockey just because I like horses. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then it blew up. And yeah. then it's the funniest thing of all time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm like, this is actually unbelievable. Unbelievable timing. Like you've gone to the Valley, won a flag, everyone can't believe it, then you're in the silks. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the big four days. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually – yeah, pretty funny. Did you talk about it on Mad Monday? Because like when you win a granny, does nothing really matters. You can fucking do what you want. Yeah, no no one really cared, like, to yeah. be honest. Like, especially on Mad Monday, like, no one gives a fuck. So, um, but that was probably the last thing we were talking about, horses. We were, yeah, we were yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that standing kit, the Mr. Brightside kit. There's yeah, a lot of one up there. Yeah, Top three. <laughs> Craigie Williams, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, uh, it's an amazing story. <laughs> Again, this book, if you could you could write a book from eighteen to twenty one, it, it's got more in it than most people, I can tell you. Um, let's talk about the transition though. So, when did you feel like you're on the outer a little bit, or like you know you maybe think it's time for a fresh start? Uh, uh, is it you know you grew up barracking for Hawthorne? Was it probably a few comments made from Fly in the press conference? Was it your manager saying, "Hey, mate, I think it might be best to." Get a fresh start. We've got a lot of interest from the Hawks. I know you grew up barracking for the Hawks. Um, look, give me a bit of an insight onto what was going through your mind probably a couple of weeks after the granny. Yeah. it's. I guess it sort of started like maybe like halfway through the year um, that I got dropped against West Coast and like didn't have the best game. And I knew I just felt this, like there was three injuries, but I just knew like I was going to get dropped even though there was injuries. Like I just knew. And I remember just sitting in the rooms after the West Coast game, around 13, mum and dad came over, like, just bawling my eyes out to them. And they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, they they knew sort of what's wrong. I'm like, like I'm not going to be playing next week. And then I didn't play next week. And, it, and then I was like, holy shit, like, if I'm not playing now, like, I'm going to have to play VFL for four weeks and have a really good stint. And if I don't have a good stint, I'm not going to be playing mm-hmm. in the finals. So oh, that's when, like... And there's so many boys in the same situation. There was Finn and, like, we're just, like, Josh Carmichael and people were just like, geez, what are we going to do? Like, we don't want to be playing twos our whole life. And then so sort of, like, there and then I really worked and, like, tried to get back inside and I did. And then after the grand final it was sort of – I went to Bali. Oh, we had the exit meeting with Fly and a few things in there were a bit – and I was like, oh, like – and, yeah, so that was a bit of an eye-opening, that exit meeting. And then, yeah, I went to Bali probably two weeks later with five mates from the Pies. And, um, yeah, I just wasn't really myself because there was clubs trying to call my manager. He was trying to call me. And and I'm like, this is going to be the biggest decision of my life probably up to this date. So um, do I leave? Do I stay at the Pies? I love Collingwood. Like, I've got all my best mates there. I'm away on holiday with them. But I've got one year there and no one's reached out to, you know, want me to stay where I've got Hawthorne who I've had 10 players message me saying, come to the Hawks. I've got a four year deal. And I'm like, 
and it's my childhood dream to play for the Hawthorne. So I'm like, well, it was pretty. It was a pretty easy easy decision when it got to four years. I'm like, well, you know, not many players get a four year contract. So compared to one, and um, yeah, the most disappointing thing was probably just no coach or player reaching out to say, I want you to stay, and we really value you and all those things. But um, yeah, there were so many Hawks boys that messaged me. I remember Finn, CJ, Maury, Will Day, all messaged me saying, come to the Hawks. And um, yeah, that made me feel really special. And um, yeah, I'm loving it, Hawks. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And it is a business at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, four-year deals aren't easy. Um, and when you win a flag, it's I, I just I feel like that decision's made so much easier. You know, if you don't win a flag, you're thinking, I want to go back and do it again. And who knows? But anyway, you just got to look forward. And yeah, yeah. So you've you signed the four year deal. You're at the Hawks. I mean, what was that like when it came out? Was it was it crazy? Like was it because it's kind of were you contracted with the, the yeah, pot? So yeah, I had one year left. Yeah, so it was a bit mm. of a like shock. I remember I saw it on my phone going, "Oh, I didn't see that coming." Mm. Yeah, it's it's so weird because like obviously it came out and you're calling a player like one second ago and now you're like, "Oh, I'm a Hawks player," and you're like, "Oh, this is weird." Like, yeah, but like what what's changed? Nothing's changed apart from like someone's wrote an article and you've just yeah like the colors you've yeah, changed that literally, profile with literally. little at collingwood at hawthorne yeah. in the bio so <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that was weird and like i lived with nathan murphy and like i had all my stuff at collingwood still so like then i was just the process of like telling telling everyone and i probably had two hours to tell all the people i wanted to and then my manager was like it's going to come out then so um yeah did all that and then i remember going back with my ex-girlfriend to Collingwood and like my locker and grabbing all my stuff. And I got like a cool ass photo of me holding my medal and put it up on um, Twitter. And yeah, that was like such a cool moment to, yeah, just go back and look at all the things I've done and grab all my stuff. And yeah, that was the last time I was there. But um, yeah, it was such a a weird thing that I never thought like, you never think like you're going to get traded and then you actually do. And then you're like, shit, like I need to start doing shit. Like you need to start speaking to the other coaches and meeting other people and all these things. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. What what have you done differently at the Hawks that you did at the Pies? So obviously, when you started at the Pies, you're only, you know, you're a rookie, you're very you're only 18 years old, but now you're 21, you've gone to the Hawks, you've won a flag, you've won an Anzac Day medal, you know, you've been up, you've gone through all the ups and downs. What did you kind of do differently with your training and your your habits and the way you approach, you know, First impressions are the, mm. the most important, they say. What did you do when you first walked into the uh, Hawthorne Footy Club? Yeah, I was I was very reserved. Um, I didn't I didn't want to be a loud mouth. Like I I was came in very humble. Um, yeah, didn't speak a lot. Um, and I think that's been quoted in, in the media by a few players as well. Thought he'd be louder and a bit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more of that. But um, yeah, sort of just like earn the respect first. Um, which I think I did with my training habits and um, just out on the track and all those things. And now I feel like I'm a real, I'm becoming a real leader of the group. And, um, you know, we have so many young guys in our, in our team and I feel like I've got so much experience. I'm only young, but I feel like I have a lot of experience to speak to these guys. I think there's probably 20 people under or 25 people under the age of me. So like I can be a real leader in the, in the club and, um, and yeah, just my worth eth- work ethic as well as I feel like it's gone through the roof and um, yeah, I'm a much fitter player and better player um, coming to Hawks. Well, mate, you started on fire, which we love. Um, I want to talk about this man, uh, Kane Collins. He's everywhere in the media and he, I, I, the one thing that I've always said, we love positive media. So I love, that's what I love about these podcasts is just getting context to stories that people don't mm. understand and getting to know the person before the athlete. Now, this guy always comes for you. I think he just come out and said you shouldn't have been wearing long sleeve jerseys. Now, this guy will just pick anything apart. Have you actually got a relationship with this bloke? Have you ever spoken to him? Have any encounters? I'm just interested to, the you know, this this relationship. Yeah, I, probably two. After Anzac Day medal, um, I, either he or me flicked each other a message saying, is that good enough or so, something like that, um, which was good. So he gave me a bit of credit for that. And then he dyed his hair, so... I was sort of, I was pretty impressed by that. Like it, it takes pretty big balls to go dye hair. He's got big plums. He yeah. must have big plums because yeah. he, he's just some outrageous yeah. stuff and he dyed the hair. Exactly. You know, so he dyed his- 42K every Sunday or does <laughs> marathons. He's a machine. Yeah. So he dyed his hair. So I was, I was pretty stoked about that. And then, yeah, I did, did hear the whack from the, the long sleeves. I was, oh no, I just feel so comfortable in them and they're actually protecting me from the sun. I would have, I reckon it would have had sunburn if I didn't wear them, but 
um, for me, like wearing long sleeves makes me feel so comfortable. And um, yeah, when I'm playing in long sleeves, I just feel such a better player. So um, that's why I wear the long sleeves. There you go. You've got to give him the context. There you go, Kane. He's wearing them because it's protects the sun. It's a bit like the Rixies. You've got to put them on your face, not just to look good. <laughs> exactly right. Feel good, protect yourself. Um, do you wear longies all the time? What decision goes through your mind like before the game? You're going, nut nah, longies, is it all year? Yeah. So yeah, longies all year. Um, so I think it was like 28 in the weekend, 27, but the granny was – like 31 and I, like it was actually unbearable for the granny. Like I remember I was walking out of my, of the change rooms and I had them both in my hand. I'm like, I actually don't think I can do it. And the ones at Collingwood are a bit thicker. Yeah. The ones at Hawthorne are actually really thin and uh, very loose on the arms. So um, yeah, it probably helps with that as well. Let's have a laugh here. So if Kane Corns in his prime was coming to you and you were playing fourth pocket, how many would you kick on him? <laughs> oh, I reckon he'd get carried away thinking he's too good. So probably five or six. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I thought you were going to say four. You've gone with five or six. That is brilliant. Now, mate, we love our friends here at Amy. Um, Amy had got a great program, Clangers for Good. They're giving away uh, opportunities for local footy clubs to make some cash. They're turning Clangers into good. I wish they were around in 2016, as I said, with my prelim but um we love asking players um and our guests you know some things and one of these uh their biggest amy clangers so i want you to think about a time in the on the footy field let's keep this on the footy field where you've had a moment that's one of your most embarrassing clangers that we can maybe marry up some footage to so uh guinea give me your amy clanger what would it be Jeez, it's it's hard on the spot I, my mind straight away goes to i was playing frio in my second year and I'm running into open goal and I celebrate before I kick the goal and I, I look back at it and I really cringe about it. Like it, it just gives me the ick so hard. Like <laughs> I'm running in like and I've gone this one. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but it's, it's a bit icky. Like now I look back, I'm like, oh, I'm so naive. Got my blonde hair. Like I've just taken a mark one-on-one with Brennan Cox, I think, and just pushed him over and just d- done this one before I've kicked it. <laughs> and then straight in front of the Freo fans, I've just gone like this. But, yeah, it gives me a little bit of the ear. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. So that is your Amy Klinger, given yeah. the uh, given the gun show out pre-goal. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say you're going to get tackled from behind, but you're too good of a player. There you go. That is funny. There's some funny things that you've done as a young man. Yeah. I, I reckon it's, um, as I said, a lot of fans – they just they probably hate you because you're so good, which is just more of a hate because you it's like a Hayden Ballantyne and you mm. know you just get under the fans' skin, um, and uh, yeah, it's <laughs> especially when you're really good at that age, they're probably like, oh, not this bloke again. <laughs> yeah. How many years you play with Hayden Ballantyne? Uh, Ballers, I think I played seven at Freo. I think he was there for six or seven of them. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on him? Oh, he's the best, man. He's the best. There's a. I used to always say, if you played with him, you'd, it's like he's. You just can't love him anymore. Yeah. Um, and he's such a good dude. Like, he loves just, his horses as well. Yeah, loves his horses. Um, <laughs> he's going well. Yeah, and uh, you just, it was always hard in the media because everyone hated him, including mm. myself. So before I got to Freya, I couldn't stand him. Like, yeah. couldn't stand him. I loved him. Even Zach Dawson, we're very tight. I could not stand Zach. Yeah. Um, and it's just because of that fan. You know, mm. he used to play on. I think he might have played on Lloydo and a few of my favourite Essendon Fords. And he just used to go, do a good job. And I used to think, how is Zach Dawson doing it? Yeah. And when you get to know him and understand his game and how hard they work, yeah, you just change the perception. Straight Right away. So it's so, um, yeah, crazy how the perception changes like that. Like Once you at, meet at a footy someone, club, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I imagine that's with like fans as well. As soon as someone that comes up to you that might be a hater meets you and you're so nice, they're like, oh, I don't mind that bloke yeah, actually. Like, yeah, it's, it's always. <laughs> We're just a normal human. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just, I'm just from Castle Maine. I'm, I'm like you, man. I'm a lad. Love, yeah. love the horses, love the footy, kick a few sausages on the weekend. Yeah. Um, nah, very good. And what else, what other hobbies are you into? Like outside of footy, what else do you kind of, you've, I've seen you, you love your recovery. You're actually very professional. Um, what do you kind of do for your, uh, your recovery kind of methods? Cause everyone does something different. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving swimming at the moment. Me, me and my two housemates had just moved into Richmond, um, Oscar and Abe, we're, we're loving swimming at the moment. So a Monday morning down at Harold Holden, Glen Oris, just get a K in. And then today, uh, just another K in. And we, oh, so you love actually swimming, not yeah. just like, oh, so getting a K in, that's not easy. Yeah, just love ticking them over. And I feel like it's good for the mentals as well. Outdoor pool, bit of, bit of breeze on the face this morning. It was, it was pretty cold, but in the pool it's heated. So, um, yeah, nothing better than that. And then I've started audio books. So I'm, I'm slowly, like I can't read. Mum would pester me to read. You're all, like me, man. Yeah, all the time. So... I've uh I've done one audio book the um the oh what's it called the I don't know I forget but yeah I've done done a few and I'm still trying to develop reading audio books so um and then just love like going to cafes and coffees going to my computer 
meeting mates. I really love coffee. I drink a lot of decaf because if I have too many. You know like, yeah, <laughs> I, I remember I had three in a sitting and my goes, you're crazy, man. Have a decaf. I'm like, oh, I'll get us a decaf because yeah. you just love the social yeah, element. <laughs> literally. So I usually have one coffee and then two, two or three decafs if I'm just sitting there for a while. I, I reckon about three, four years ago, I was doing double shot lattes and I was having two, maybe three, and I was like, oh, it's getting a bit anxious after we're the third one. <laughs> yeah, we're going to add a little bit. No, I just thought, oh, and then now I've just cut back just a, just a single shot latte because yeah. then you can have, you know, if you want to have five, it's still <laughs> still less than three double yeah, shots, exactly. you know. So, yeah, single shot latte, a little hack there for the uh, coffee lovers. What's your local cafe? What's your favorite? Give a shout out. I love the business yeah. shout outs. Oh, what is your favorite cafe? You've obviously played at um, – at the pies, so you'd be around. Well, you mean you'd be around Richmond, I'd imagine yeah. area. But now you're at, around Hawthorne. Mm. What is your favourite cafe in Melbourne? Yeah, definitely. I haven't really ventured out to Glen Waverley much, so I, I'm I'm living in Richmond as well. So Cheeky Monkey is definitely my favourite. So um, the best chili scramble probably in Melbourne, or definitely in Melbourne that I've ever tasted. So, and the coffee's great there, and the uh, people that work there are really nice. So um, yeah, can't fault Cheeky Monkey, and also. <laughs> If you don't like a cafe, love a bowl. The acai bowl place in Fitzroy is unbelievable as oh, well. I love that. A couple of shout outs to you. Have you been to Norman's? No, I haven't. Best chili scrambled in, what? it's in South Yarra. Maybe we should have a battle. Mate, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would happily have a battle. Well, they've got the best chili scrambled. Have you tried the one at Cheeky Monkey? Oh, I, I reckon I've been there, but I don't know if I've ordered it. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get that on the hit and list. I might go to Norman's. I'll send you a photo of this Norman's <laughs> chili scrambled. It's right up there. What's in there? Oh, they just, it's like just one bit of bread, which I love. I don't love when yeah, they put two bits of bread on top of each other. Yeah, you know, sloppy <laughs> read. Not working like you are, not doing the K in the pool. And then they have the, this perfectly scrambled eggs, circular motion, just perfectly over the toast. Then they have like that chili samba cross yeah. with a bit of feta. And then they have like the, the parmesan on top and it just sits there. And once you mix it through <laughs> oh, and a little bit of natural, you know, fresh chilies. Oh man, it's, Lovely. and it's not too filling. Like it's a perfect size. Mm. Um, Latte on the side, a little bit of water, bang. That's me. That's my perfect breakfast. Yeah, that's that's pretty similar to me. But I have to like drink the coffee before I eat, otherwise I can't finish the coffee because it's all it's a bit too eggy, milky for me. Yeah, that's, I reckon I'd prefer to have the coffee after, but I always order the coffee at the start, and then when it's sitting there, you got to smash it yeah, while it's warm. Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. That's great too. Uh, what about the off season? Where's the coolest place you've been, mate? Because the reason I ask you that. Um, while you're answering is I've got you a present here from our friends at Rick's Eyewear. You've been massive. I know you rock the Rixies all the time. Yeah. So I got you another pair. I got you the Soho Crystal Green. Oh. You haven't got them yet, have yeah, you? That's unbelievable. No, I haven't got them. So whack them on, mate. And tell me tell me the coolest place you've worn the Rixies in the world. Um, and then tell me your perfect place you'd love to go and the two blokes from Hawthorne you'd go with. Uh, the best place of all these sunnies, the Soho cherries at the time were in Positano, just laying by the beach. So that was, um, it's probably the best be- beach I've ever been to. Um, and for anyone who hasn't been to Positano, I highly recommend, um, this year, um, somewhere I would want to go is Greece or Miami. I'm just hearing that it's unbelievable, especially when you're single, apparently. So. <laughs> you're freshly single? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Miami, you can't probably, go. You probably getting the memo. That yeah, yeah, I got that before when you said 70,000, a couple of gems. I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I reckon Miami or, or Greece and two boys I would go with is uh, Finn, Finn McGuinness and CJ. So a few ruse. Uh, yeah. Probably not. I might not be able to catch up to them. But, yeah, uh, that's all right, mate. You just get the crumbs, a bit like yeah. game day, just, just crumb. Legit, I'll be crumbing them. But, um, <laughs> yeah, those two boys, or Greece and Miami. So we're trying to plan a trip at the end of the year, but we, we don't know where yet. So What kind of uh, things are these guys going to bring to the table when you're in Miami? Yeah, CJ is definitely going to bring the the party element. Like he's very energetic, um, loves having fun. So CJ will definitely be doing that um, when we're on the beach having a few few beers. Um and then Finn's a real mature, mature guy. You need so, that guy. Exactly. So he's our rock. So <laughs> if anything happens, we'll go to Finn. Um, he's definitely sent it all up and he's got the accommodation sorted. He's got the flight sorted. He's the operations guru. Exactly. So we'll just transfer you the money later, Finn. And, oh, that is great. And get going. <laughs> you need that. I think you'd love Miami. When I was your age, I went to Miami because obviously you've got to be 21. And I reckon mm-hmm. I was, might have been 22. And we went to, um, yeah, a couple of places and it was the pool parties that were just crazy. Yeah. I remember spending way too much money on booths. We could talk about booths all oh, day. Yeah. Don't do, don't do, don't go too silly with the booths. Yeah. You've got to do them when you're young and you've got a little bit the kangaroo. Vegas booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just get a good group. But I reckon the pool parties, you get your best bang for buck because there's a full pool party um, and the booths aren't too expensive and away you go. Yeah. So I reckon Miami, you'd have a lot of fun. Mm. The only thing is 
you want to go there if you don't play finals because you want to get the end of their. I think it's. I think it's their spring. I don't know. It's end. Of, it's not their summer. So if it's any later, mm. you kind of miss out on yeah, a bit of sun. It's, it's hard being a football. Obviously, when you you can't go over to Europe in the summer or America. Yeah. So. Um, hopefully we make finals. We want to make finals. Yeah, exactly. But if, finals but if, first. But if we don't. Yeah, you've always got you got Miami, Vegas. There's yeah. plenty of places. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, chuck them on. Let them ever know. They're the, they're the uh, Soho Green, Crystal Green, um, and we've got a special discount code out there for everyone. It's ACES. So if you head to rickseyewear.com.au, uh, use our discount code ACES. You'll get 20% off and free express shipping. And you'll be looking like Guinea, um, all class. Could not be better. Thanks, mate. Take them off. So, what else, mate? What else do you want to? What, what are your What are your goals um, for the year? You know, what do you want to get out of um, this year? Yeah, so I've yeah written down a few goals. Um, all Australian squad, but it's probably the ultimate goal. Um, yeah. So if I and if I probably kick forty five goals, um, you know, twenty score assists, something like that is is what I've written down and. Um, yeah, it's sort of it's it seems far away, but it, it's actually not when you you know your week by week process and um, like on the weekend, it's it's such a good start. If I put together four quarters, it you know could have bolstered it even better. But um, I know I've like got that. I've I've done it in the first half. I just need to continue to play out four quarters, and um, yeah, it will hopefully shine a light in in a few oh in a few months time. Yeah, no, nah, I love it that you've just gone out and given everyone insight into your goals. It's courageous writing your goals down, but it's also very courageous to let people know, especially on a podcast like this. People probably hear that and think all kinds of things, but um, it's actually hard to to let everyone know your goals, mm. whether even it's just your partner or your best friend. So I love that you've done that. Um, Keep me account. I will, mate. So it's 45 sausages, 20 goal assists. 20, I'm going to say score assists because I threw on the weekend with three points. So Oh, that hurts. <laughs> so I'm like, I want it to be goal assists, but yeah. me and my coach we were out on the weekend on Monday and I'm like, We'll change it to score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I reckon that that hurts. You know when you I come – I remember coming through the middle of the ground very few times, but you put it on someone's titty, they go back and they miss it, and you go, you've just ruined that passage of play. Yeah. You've got to finish the work, son. I know. I, I hit Punky in the in the third or second quarter, I lace out, and, you know, Luke Bruce, one of the best set shots to ever play, and, and he's just – He fade. never misses, man. And he just faded it right and oh. – Punky, come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> Give me one. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he never misses. That's a, I mean, was it round one? So we'll yeah. let him off the hook. Yeah. Um, now nah, we'll keep you accountable. There you go. We'll, uh, we'll make sure we, um, as all Australian squad, we just keep putting your best foot forward. Um, mate, it's great to catch up. It's uh, it's awesome to chat footy. We'll get you on. We've obviously got a lot going on here at Oz American Aces. I love that you love your NBA. We might be doing something later in the year around finals, so we'll get you involved in that. Who's your team in the NBA? Do you have a team or are you more like me, just players and whoever you put a multi on? Uh, no, I don't have a team. It's I have a few though. So like I've met Giddy a few times, so OKC, okay, and then I love LeBron, and then – I used to love DeMar DeRozan, so I'm, a, I'm an old Raptors fan. So He's so underrated. I know, unbelievable. So I've got a DeMar DeRozan jersey at home, so um, they're not going too great. Scotty Barnes, yeah, there's, there's a bit of issues, but next year when we get a few more young lads in, we'll, yeah. be, we'll be okay. I love it. Yeah, I just I think I'm, I'm in love with Ann Edwards at the moment. Yeah, he's... I, I think because I love how funny he is as well. I don't yeah. know if you, if anyone oh. out there doesn't know who he is, go type in Ann Edwards' as interviews <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> and then look at what he does on the basketball court. They're comparing him as like the next Michael Jordan yeah. at the moment, which is... I mean, I never really saw Michael growing up, but... um, He's, he's interviewed with that girl when he's talking about baseball. Yeah. <laughs> clean up on R7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, he's very funny. He's very funny. Uh, mate, that's all I've got for you. I really appreciate you coming in. It's been good. We've, uh, we've timed it well. I reckon yes. it was good doing it now. Last year was quite stressful, but... Um, 100%. Mate, congratulations on everything so far as well. You forget how, um, you know how well you've gone and, and some amazing things you've done. And, you know, you would have created so many cool memories for your family and your, and your friends and, and you're creating more now and you're a new club. You look much more mature. And like you said, they're a young group. So you've kind of, um, you've already, you've already, already always had those leadership qualities, but yeah, they're coming out and, uh, yeah, I just can't wait to see you go this year and, and you boys, it's a young list. How's my man, David Hale going? Is he going well, Haley? Yeah. Haley's good. He's, um, is he a midfield coach? Yeah. He's trying to fleece me of, um, NFL trades already. So he wants my second, <laughs> he, second round draft. He's pick. very good on the NFL fantasy. Yeah, uh, so Hayley. he's trying to fleece me already and I've met him for five <laughs> seconds. So <laughs> no, nah, he's a good man and he loves his horses as well. So we get on very well. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, say good day to the great man for me. Thanks mate that was awesome and thank you to everyone that tunes in uh, make sure you subscribe like share this to your mates share this to your friends that love guinea as well 
Uh, we appreciate your support. Tommy Talks is back. We've got plenty of big plan- and plans this year. And um, yeah, there's a lot of good podcasts we're doing at Oz American Aces. If you haven't checked out the Clubhouse, Ads and Dunks, Only Sport and a few others. Aces Premiership Countdown with Hibbo, our weekly AFL show. Make sure you check all them out. Um, we see all your comments. But yeah, once again, Guinea, thanks for coming on. And to everyone out there, thank you. We'll see you next week. One more time because I really mean it. I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support you continue to give us at the Oz American Aces. If you want to further support us, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the follow button so you can keep up to date with all our exciting shows and announcements. Righto, now it's time to give our sponsors a massive plug. This episode is brought to you by Amy. Clangers happen. Lucky you're with Amy. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but I got huge news. We have all our styles and colors restocked on the website right now. It's been months. We ran out of stock, but we're back. Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house.